first was show you my setup. Now I've got it down here, uh, an Atari STE. Now I don't know if you know if you don't know the Atari ST series. Um, the E stands for enhanced, and it's an Atari they, an ST they brought out a bit later on in the ST's career. Um, everything kind of started off with the Atari 520 ST, which was a very basic system. You had to buy a monitor to go with it and a disk drive, connect it all up. And then kind of as time went on, they implemented more of these things within the case itself. They released an STM, um, which was the basic model, but with a modulator, an RF modulator. So you could connect it to a TV, which I'm sure opened it up to loads of people on a budget. I mean, Atari at the time were all about it power without the price. I mean, you know, not having to buy a monitor, I'm sure, was a great thing at the time. So then, they brought, after the STM, they brought out the STFM, which was the mod I've got one right here, actually. Ta -da! The STFM, which is, you know, a bit more of a similar shape, because the, the ST and the STM were actually quite stubbier than this. This is a bit, uh, that's a bit more depth. Um, yeah, so this is the STFM, which is it has got the modulator on it, that's what the M stands for, but the F stands for this little beauty here, the floppy drive, so you didn't have to have a separate floppy drive either, um, which is cool. Must have taken some hints from Amstrad on that, like packing everything into one package. Um, so that was my ST from back in the day, I've had that a long, long time. We bought it second hand and it was already quite yellowed, I don't know if you can see that really, but it's uh, yellowed quite a lot in the sun, which is, you know happens to all microcomputers. Uh, there are things you can do to get rid of that yellow in, but I think it's all part of the character. I'll be leaving it like that. Uh, and anyway, well, recently, I say recently, about three years ago before my uh, my first little one came along, um, I bought an Atari ST. Um, yeah, well, I'll show you. Uh, let's get cosy. Here we go. Oh, sorry about the shaky cam. There we go. It's going to have to happen, isn't it? That's it there. You can see in the top corner. I don't know. Oh, will it focus? No. There's a little E there. STE. Now, it's a 520 STE, so when it was bought, it came with half a meg of RAM. But one of the really good things about the STE is uh, it's really easy to upgrade. So now it's got four megabytes of RAM. Oh, a whole four megabytes. How exciting. Um, now, the thing with the STE is that it is an enhanced version of the STFM but I think even though today if you want if you want the best Atari ST gaming rig you need an STE um, to make sure you get the most out of it but I think at the time it was a bit of a disappointment I think people wanted a bit more of an upgrade uh, if you read the magazines at the time there's a lot of people speculating about things about higher resolution and a, a faster CPU um, all kinds of things like that, um, but it wasn't so much of an upgrade. I'd imagine Atari were thinking, we've got lots and lots of ST users out there already, we can't expect them all to go out and upgrade to a completely new machine, we need something that's compatible with the thousands of software that's available on the market currently. Um, so that's what they did, they, they released the STE with enhancements, I mean it's got a, a higher colour palette, you can still only have 16 on screen at, at any one time without coding trickery. Um, it's got stereo output sound. It's got a blitter chip to speed up graphics. Uh, it's got an improved operating system, well, marginally improved. Um, so yeah, lots of little kind of tweaks and updates, um, but not the massive one that you know people were expecting. But you know, having said that, that came later with the Atari Falcon, and that, you know that didn't exactly shift off the shelves like like hot cakes, did it? So uh, you know, perhaps Atari were right in the end. I don't think anything was going to stave off the uh, meteoric rise of the IBM PC, really, was it? Um, all right. Anyway, let's have a look at my system. As I say, it's a STE, four megabytes. Now I got a couple of original pieces of kit that would you know you could have actually bought at the time. This is a hard disk, not currently uh, plugged in. Uh, 40 megabytes of, uh, of storage there, Whew, the heady heights, probably would have seemed, seemed like loads at the time. Uh, I've got a second floppy disk, well I say second, it's actually my only floppy disk drive at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Now, 
one of the massive, massive design faults of the Atari ST, and it's the same in the STE and the STFM, is here, this is where the joystick and the mouse go. I wonder if I can lift it up and show you. I mean, what is that all about? Which goon at Atari decided that would be a good place to put those? Really, really awkward. So this is an essential piece of kit here. Between here and here, this is a, a joystick extender cable, which allows you to plug in your mouse and your joystick without having to actually lift up the ST. Because as you can imagine, most people would lift it up at the front to get to those. But uh, all your cables and stuff are at the back. So yeah, lifting up at the front, not a good idea, because you're going to be bashing those about, causing all kinds of connection problems. Uh, oh, another piece of original kit that I had at the time. Oh, the zip stick. Oh, the joystick of joysticks. Absolutely fantastic. It's uh, very responsive. Lovely joystick to use. Oh, I've just changed something. Oh, never mind. Oh, this is Ooh Crikey What a Scorcher SD demo, by the way, in case you're interested. Um, right, so... A number of things I've done to bring my ST you know, to the current millennium. Um, where should we start? Let's start down here. Um, now, a fantastic, really knowledgeable ST user um, uh, who's not with us anymore, sadly, um, provided me with one of these. This is called a Pest. Um, so it plugs in as normal into your, into your mouse and joystick port. But at the other end of it, let's see, there it is, is a PS2 connector. So you can actually put any old uh, PC mouse into it. Because uh, at one point, I don't know if they still are, they probably are, ST mice were a bit of a rarity. So, um, so that was a really nice addition. And actually, ST mice aren't that good, so it's nice to have a, a, a really nice, responsive, uh, modern mouse. Um, Alright, another modern update over here. This is an absolute beast. Uh, it goes by an unfortunate name if you happen to be a Christian. But it is, uh, it's called an Ultra Satan. Now obviously I've got my uh, hard disk over there with its nice 40 megabytes of storage. Uh, probably going to crap out on me at any moment. Uh, but, but this, it, it emulates a hard disk. So you put your, uh, the slots here for um, two SD cards. So you stick those in there. Uh, and basically you can use those as hard disks. So um, what have I got in there? That's a two gigabyte one in there. So I got then got it's the equivalent of having a two gigabyte hard disk. Absolutely fantastic. Um, what was I going to say about the Ultra Satan? Yeah, the, oh, <laughs> the really good use of an Ultra Satan is that you can you can take out the SD card and then whoop, I can slot it into my. Uh, laptop or my PC upstairs and um, obviously then transfer things to and from the Atari onto my laptop you know then the internet's your oyster any old software that you fancy grab it from the internet stick it on the card and you know it's accessible from the ST it makes things so much easier than having to transfer everything via floppy disk as I used to fantastic but it is a bit of a fiddle to try and get an SD card that's compatible with the Ultra Satan and the ST and a PC as well. There's oh, so many limitations with DOS partitions and TOS partitions that trying to get it to work with both can be a bit of a faff, but well worth the bother. And um, very recently, very recently, I purchased another upgrade. Let's see if I can very carefully lift up the lid. Oh, let's try not to break anything. Here we go. This is an SD HXC floppy disk emulator. As you can see, I've taken out the the, uh, the floppy disk drive that normally sits there um, and installed this instead. Quite a simple install. Just take out the the power cable here uh, from the floppy and stick it in there, and the, um, the, whatever this is called, take that out of the floppy and put it into the the emulator. Um, and again, this uses SD cards, but instead of emulating a hard disk or anything like that, or any real disk, what you do is you load this up with, obviously, the, the firmware, the software that you need to use it, and um, stick on all your SD images, um, your disk images, uh, and then stick it in there, and, you know, you've got access to them there. And it's just like having... 
thousands and thousands of ST discs, um, uh, you know, all in one place. Uh, so I think that's it, really. Any more bits and bobs? No, I think that's it. Um, yeah, let's put this back over here for a sec. There you go, there is my Atari ST setup. Um, if you're an ST user, please down there somewhere in the comments tell me about your setup, you know, what have you got running? Um, what do you use your ST for? I mean, these days it's 99% games for me, but I do do a bit of um, music composi composition from time to time, a bit of pixel art and stuff like that. Oh, that was one thing, another thing I wanted to mention. I've got a SCART connector connecting it up to my TV. Uh, this TV is, I mean it's good, it di displays the ST, which is great because a lot of modern LCD TVs do not get on with the signal that this baby kicks out at all. Um, but it's far too big and you can see all kinds of pixelated artefacts on there, you probably can't from where you are at the minute. But um, yeah, it's, not, it's not nice to look at to be honest. So I either need to get my old uh, tube portable down from the loft and set that up or perhaps look into getting a smaller LCD that works with it. Well, it's an yeah, absolute minefield, absolute minefield, trying to get one that works with it. Um, I think that's it, really. That's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. There's going to be plenty more videos. I'll probably be posting videos next about my favourite games uh, on the system, and we'll have a bit of a, a gameplay and a bit of a laugh. Anyway, stay tuned.